437. And we have quorum, so um, at this time we will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. A motion we approve the current agenda. Motion number one. Is there, there a second? Do we have to ask for it? Mm -hmm. do we oh, oh, right. Is there a second? Can I second my own motion? I, I'll second your oh. motion. <laughs> I'll second. And um, does the public have any comments on the agenda? So, all in favor of the agenda? That's Aye. proposed. Aye. 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 There we go. So it's unanimous. Unanimous. Yes. At this time, we'll have public input. The public is invited to present petitions, make announcements, or provide other information to the commission that is relevant to the scope of authority of the city of Blue Lake that is not on the agenda. The commission may provide up to 15 minutes for this public input session to assure that each individual presentation is heard. The commission may uniformly impose time limits of three minutes to each individual presentation. The public will be given the opportunity to address items that are on the agenda at the time the commission takes up each specific agenda item. Kent. First, the secretary can say that um, Kent made no comments on the first item, so Cindy wouldn't have to put that in the record. <laughs> so it, it's interesting times for all of us. Um, <clears throat> this is general. I don't think these are need to, a few things need to be put. But I noticed today that San Francisco had all of the large cities have a very major problem in that they're going to have all kinds of foreclosures and their commercial property going vacant. And just for notice, San Francisco had over, I think, really close to or over twice as much a propensity to have lost than Los Angeles did. And I'm just guessing the capitalization in Los Angeles is larger. So that's not, I wouldn't be investing in San Francisco, which I'm not going to do. Um, regarding my investments, uh, called the bank today, I used to have a half million dollar credit line. They said I could have more if I need it. But I really am reluctant to invest it here in the United States and especially in an area where I don't feel like I'm supported. So there's a good chance that and selling off a few other properties will give me two or three million to work with. And then go back down to Mexico again because they're down there. It's just totally everybody's doing the best they can to help. People are appreciative of the money that comes into the community. And uh, for those of us who invest in California, we don't feel that to be true in California. Uh, very few of us, are, a lot of us are moving out of California in droves, that's why our population is going down. So uh, it's gonna be a rough road for any community uh, unless, unless you guys can really find some ways to make us wanna stay here and invest in our small community. Without that, those of us who are able to play on the, that particular level will be moving our assets somewhere else. Thank you for my opportunity to speak. I don't think there's hardly anything you have to put in the minutes on that one. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, moving on to item four, Humboldt County Sheriff contract update. Yeah, so I wanted to provide. Um, Mine, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, Justin. Um, I wanted to provide you guys with just an update on where we're at with the sheriff contract. Um, there had been comments in the past, you know, some concerns with businesses and the business community, especially about making sure that we have adequate law enforcement in the community. And I recognize that that's um, a legitimate concern. Um, and so I just wanted to let you guys know that we've been uh, meeting with representatives from the sheriff's office, uh, specifically Regina Fuller and Captain Brian Quinnell, um, to look at a um, methodology for computating the costs um, associated with the city share of uh, law enforcement services. Um, and we've made um, really good um, progress in those in those uh, negotiations. Um, Mayor Jones and Council Member uh, McKay and myself have been meeting with uh, Regina and Brian. Um, our current cost proposal, which I think is kind of where we're landing right now, is one hundred and ninety thousand. Um, so that's down from three hundred and fifteen, which was the original amount. Um, the city is currently paying about one hundred and forty five plus. We also pay in for animal control. Um, so we contract with the Sheriff's Department for animal control services as well. Um, so 190 is a little bit more in, um, in our budget. 
Um, we are proposing to submit a small measure Z application as well um, to request just kind of some stopgap funding to just kind of help us get to the um, get through the first year with this new increase um, as we're seeing additional sales tax revenues come in in our district tax. Um, those are have been on the upswing, so that's um, a good a good indicator for Blue Lake um, and that district tax was earmarked um, to support general fund expenditures, including parks and recreation and law enforcement. Um, so I'm really, really happy with, you know, where we're at in these discussions. Um, the sheriff's department, the, their team has been really supportive. I think we've worked really well together. Um, we were able to come up with an actual methodology for allocating costs and that I think is very reasonable um, and it allows us to um, move forward in the future for any type of increases. It gives us something you know to actually look at. Um, it gives us some real hard data to be able to analyze and to be able to make decisions based upon. So um, I'm really I'm really happy to be moving forward in that direction. Um, we'll be uh, basically renegotiating our contract to some extent to kind of clean up some of the language. Um, there's, you know, it, once we got through the contract, we kind of realized that there were some areas that really needed to be addressed and could have been more thoughtful um, in their um, interpretation. And so we're going to kind of clean up some of that and then put into a, the new, con propose this new methodology so that, like I said, we have something um, solid for us to work from in the future. Um, it's a three-year contract? Um, that's what they had, that's what we had in the past. And mm -hmm. so that'll be, you know, I'm I'm assuming that's probably what will be proposed, but I don't know at this point. Um, an interesting part of this equation was um, the fact that this contract needs to go, any contract proposal needs to go back to the Board of Supervisors. Um, there was actually an action item by the Board of Supervisors originally establishing the authority to contract with the city. Um, so it allowed the sheriff to um, contract with the city over just under a three-year period, um, but it capped the amount of total payable at 327000 So um, anything beyond that 327 over that time period has to go back for a contract amendment. And so our current proposal needs to go back anyways. The 315 was um, outside of that scope, obviously. Um, and so the sheriff's staff now, you know, we were able to provide that information and just clean up that process. So the final proposal um, will be uh, cleaned up and consolidated and presented to the city council um, and then also to the Board of Supervisors for authorization. <clears throat> we are asking that the contract um, be implemented in fiscal year 24-25. Um, the sheriff is asking that it be um, backdated to 23-24. Um, but my, you know, kind of the thought process is by the time this negotiation is final, we have a final project or contract language, it has to go to county council, it's got to go to our council, goes through a long process. We're going to almost be at May um, and we're already in, in budget year, um, you know, negotiations at that point. So to try and take it at that point in the process and backdate it a whole year and implement that just makes it, it makes it difficult for both staffs to kind of work with them. We all have to go and do budget amendments and things. It would be a much cleaner process to implement it going forward. So um, that's the one consideration that um, that we're we're asking for. I think it's reasonable. Um, this has been kind of a long process um, and we're only just now at a point where we actually had some real numbers to really look at. So I think it's, it's I think it's a fair ask. Um, and like I said, we'll be submitting just a small measure Z application as well um, to to kind of help with that. So that all could roll into the next fiscal year process. So, um, but I just wanted to give you guys an update and I don't know, uh, Mayor Jones, if you have anything else to add about the negotiations, but I felt like we all worked really well together. I feel like we have a good rapport. Um, and so um, it's, it's kind of, it's a good feeling <laughs> at this yeah, point to have that. And we actually had pages of the numbers, and we went line, pretty much line by line. And there were errors that were found, and, and she uh, realized that. And so corrections were made right there and there. And so it just 
progress really well in updating and yeah. making those tweaks. Yeah, and kind of what they're proposing is, you know, these kind of cost centers. So looking at, you know, it's it's still based upon population. So um, Blue Lake in their proposal is like 1.63% of the total county population. And so they're applying that 1.63% to uh, various uh, uh, cost centers. So recruitment, um, deputy salaries, um, some allocations for um, equipment, vehicles, um, facilities. Um, so we were able to, you know, work with them. The original budget that they were working from was about $17 million. And we were able to find some areas where we felt it was legitimate to have those pulled out. Um, there was also quite a bit of grant funding that was factored in that we asked to be removed because um, it wasn't appropriate to charge the city for costs that were being covered from another source. And so they agreed on that. So it took the, the cost from 17 million down to 11 million. So that um, that's what really dropped that proposal from the, you know, the big 315 down to the 190. Um, so like I said, it just, it seems to make pretty good sense for something that's kind of hard, you know, to kind of piece together. Um, I was also really happy, um, Brian, uh, Captain Quinnell was also able to, look at our call data. Um, there had been the commentary that, you know, the city has over 2,000 calls for service a year and that's consistent. Um, we, he was able to go in and extrapolate out the calls that are just for the city of Blue Lake and that was about 500. Is so, there any way to determine what percentage of those calls came in over landlines? Because AT&T oh. is petitioning the Public oh, Utilities right. Commission to do away with landlines. And I think in our rural area, it's going to impact our ability to communicate in ordinary times mm -hmm. and catastrophically <clears throat> in times of disaster. Yeah, which I'm not infrequent. I would assume that there's the ability to like search it by like prefix or, um, you know, to be able, I mean, we all know. If it's you on know, a spreadsheet somewhere. It just needs to be yeah, checked against. Yeah, I'm sure that did. I'm sure that data is available. I don't know. My landline yeah. that I've had forever and ever is now through the cable company. Right. So if they even searched it, it's really not a landline. Anymore. No, it's a cable. It's not a, yeah, it's, it's not, not a copper yeah. wire. So, yeah. But, so it wouldn't work in a power outage. Right. But the landlines right. work in a power right. but outage I mean, when as our far cell phones as don't. If I call in, it looks like it's coming from my mm -hmm. home number that is not a landline. So anymore. the number migrated to your cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, some of us don't have cable. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't have absolutely. Anyway, so. so extrapolating it could be not as. Well, and then there's some parts of the county where it's the only option. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm getting off topic here. But no, I agree. Yeah, I'm with really you. Important. I mean, I. I agree. Uh, there are. There are people who are putting together petitions and everything else, mm -hmm. and uh, I understand that Madro is pushing back on it. Uh, but for us, it's it's important to have it, especially when the power goes out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we do have those moments. Right. Is the 190, does that include the animal control? No, the animal control is a separate contract. Okay. Yeah. And so we pay for, um, we pay a quarterly payment for basically to hold shelter space to help support the shelter. Mm -hmm. And then we pay on an as-needed basis for response if, um, so we don't have um, animal um, control patrol, control patrol, mm -hmm. um, but we do have, if you call in and need animal control, um, basically what they'll do is they'll call city hall and say, hey, we have a call. Um, do you want us to respond? And then the city makes a determination whether it's um, something that we want to have animal control come out for. So if it's a a dog attack or a dog bite or something something more aggressive if it's you know opie's on the trail again we Is don't it, know who he belongs to <laughs> we can be like hey you know we we got we can handle this one in house um so Is we did a 24 hour mm -hmm, response yeah. for the city too yeah we have an emergency number and then they also have uh, my direct uh, number hmm. as well so we have kind of a call tree but at that point, if they weren't able to get a hold of us, they would make the determination just to respond. Right. And they'll respond if there's a life-threatening situation or there's imminent danger. To um, If it's obviously a head. They're not going to call me. They're going to respond anyways. So. And so there's different funds that take care of that. So when you said uh, they reduced the amount of calls down to 500, mm -hmm. so 
Where are the other ones? Out of city limits. And that was one of our concerns, you know, and I, you know, I think we were able to, you know, portray that the city really is a partner that we're helping to subsidize response in the greater county area. Um, out of those 500 calls for service, only a percentage of them, and, and Brian hadn't broken it down all the way, but not every one of those requires a contact with a deputy. I mean, that can be a transfer of a call. It can be a, a resource officer. It can be a recommendation to make an online report. It can, you know, it, it doesn't mean that 500 times a deputy met with someone in Blue Lake. So out of, you know, those 500 calls, you know, the deputy is not responding every single day to someone in Blue Lake. So, but they're responding outside our area, which, you know, we've known, we know we're on a call response type of um, program at this point. But when you look at it in that way, we really are subsidizing response in the greater area, which we've we've known that because we they don't have dedicated patrols they don't have the staffing and so that was something that we've knowingly you know entered into this contract based upon that but it was also something that we really wanted to be recognized that in that way our hundred and forty five thousand dollars we're spending is helping outside the city of limits as well so um, so that was on good. The 299 corridor. It go when we look at our call data out of those 2,000 calls represent calls all the way up to Berry Summit and all the way out to Essex and Field Brook. So, and the majority of the calls are outside the city limits and also the Rancheria. So, you know, when we're looking, it's that's a pretty big area that is not little tiny Blue Lake. Um, and that was one of the things that we really wanted to, um, to put pressure on because to say that Blue Lake is, you know, crime is, you know, so bad, you have over 2000 calls. Mm -hmm. That's a really, that's a big miscalculation and big misrepresentation. So it was really important to have that recognition that those 2000 calls are not Blue Lake. Right. Um, I wonder if that gets aggregated into insurance pricing somewhere for Blue Lake. You know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, we haven't had any lapse in law enforcement services. Um, like I said, I think we, you know, we worked really well with um, the sheriff staff and we're really happy to, to have had those conversations. And um, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have had those earlier, but there were some extenuating circumstances with their staff um, that kind of precluded that. And so we, you know, it kind of got caught up in a process that um, probably normally wouldn't have taken place, but some of their staff had been out on medical leave and so they weren't available to. So it was, you know, there there was a gap there where we just really weren't able to really communicate or articulate that information. And so we finally got to that point and now we're at a much better place. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds like a lot of work. It's been, it's not been fun. <laughs> it's been a process. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Does the public have any comment on item four? Kent? So I spent probably 25, 30 minutes with Regina Fuller on the phone today, getting a few things explained. And uh, part of, there seems to be the reason of call volume being shown at all was just to show we weren't decreasing, that we were staying with the same amount. It really had nothing to do with it's apples and apples. So I can't understand why the call, it, it's nice to know it's here. It's nice to know what's here directly, but the call volume didn't have anything to do with the assessment either prior or current as far as the contract goes. The problem that was that you have here, and it's a major one, is that the, the, uh, the main thing that was ceded to the city was a certain amount of costs coming from Measure uh, Z that we got applied to our account. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there's a very good chance that Measure Z's, the sheriff's share of Measure Z will be cut in half or possibly even less during the next couple of years. So the city does need to allow for that potentially happening. What's happened if you track Measure Z, which I have quite closely all the years, is that a very high percentage of that compared to what initially was 
goes to the sheriff. There's a bunch of pushback from a lot of supervisors saying, we want to go back and we want to reapportion that. So the cities get some. So the fire departments continue to get some. So that is probably going to get reapportioned within the next few years. And that's, of course, at the discretion of the supervisors. And there's there's a major push to do that at this time. Uh, so as far as time things can go with CAP, I don't think you'll have a contract that is not set upon a uh, not even a CPI. You can't use that kind of index. It has to be actual cost basis. So now there's a format which actual cost. The sheriffs continue to get 10 percent a year raises plus their costs continue to go through the roof for everything from retirement to everything else. That will be coming into play. And uh, if, it, if it's not built into this contract, then you probably only get a one year contract in every year that will be reassessed or some kind of process of that nature. There's I can't and I'm not speaking for Regina, but, you know, this is this is my feeling of what would need to transpire because they have a mandate by the CAO to to get recoup their costs. And that's what they're they've cut it down to what they feel the bare bone cost is. And the cost will continue to go through the roof, as we all are aware in everything, I think. So anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing that we do have it at this time. Uh, what I would like to see, and I reiterated this many times before, was that we have minimal coverage from the uh, from animal control. And we really would like to, a lot of people would like to see, uh, it doesn't cost that much, I don't know what it is, 15,000, Mandy probably can tell you, to have them actually come out here and patrol on a regular basis. And that minimizes our liability right now. If they don't respond in a timely manner or something because of lack of communication or whatever, the city's on the hook for that. Now, I know our deductible is only, I think, $5,000, but uh, it's still not a good thing your insurance rates go proportionately. So um, just something to look forward to as far as the future, not look forward to. The cost will be going up on everything. We need a budget for that. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Um, moving on to item five, Flu Lake branding and signage product project. Yeah, so this is a project that's been kind of a long time coming. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think we started out when we first formed the EDC talk. We had our meetings um, about what is Blue Lake? What's our brand? Can we what signs up, please? <laughs> yes. Um. So we uh, we we've kind of gone through a bunch of steps to get to this point. Um. The last step we went through was um, the idea that maybe putting out a signage project as um, a community project, maybe an art contest project um, would be would be reasonable. Um, we put that out to the public and we didn't really receive any um, any interest um, which which is totally fine because I think I think branding is different than an art project. Um, there are some real key factors when you look at branding and marketing versus like, say like a mural. Um, and so I think, you know, for probably a lot of our artistic creative um, thinkers and artisans, creating a sign, a gateway sign is not as exciting as, you know, like I said, doing like a mural where you can let your creativity, um, you know, kind of come through you know, branding, logo signs, city signs are, are, you know, there's, there's, a, they're, they're, they're boxy um, and they're boxy for a reason. You know, you need to be able to recognize them quickly. It needs to, you know, portray a certain, um, you know, theme and it's just not as flexible as a format. So that was great. So um, we ha had a meeting recently with uh, Noah from Visual Concepts. Um, Noah is um, one of the top, uh, branders, um, sign makers um, in the county, if not the region. Um, he's a local Fieldbrook kid um, and he's loves Blue Lake. We've been working with Noah for a while to try and actually get his business to come out to Blue Lake because he really wants to be in Blue Lake. Um, he's one of our um, biggest advocates for the mountain biking trails <laughs> and he's now has a, a young daughter who is one of our biggest advocates for Friday night skating. So he spends a lot of time at the skating rink, which is fun. So he's really vested in Blue Lake and has really taken part in our recreation activities and um, is really excited to kind of help us kind of get this, you know, go to this next step. Um, so Emily and I met with Noah the other day and uh, went to his um, office to kind of talk about like, like, how do you, how do you do this? How does this process come about? You know, we, um, we had a really, beautiful graphic that the city purchased um, that was used a couple of years ago for the um, 
the cyclocross event mm -hmm. and it had those really pretty like blues and teals mm -hmm. and oranges and it had you know people riding bikes and horses and walking and we just felt like that was just such a great reflection of blue lake and the colors um, really just seemed to really resonate um, with a lot of people and so we purchased that artwork so that we could use it in some of our um, attempts at branding and um, so we gave that to Noah as just kind of a baseline to be like hey here's you know, here's a something to work with. I don't know if it's like the this. end all, but it seems happy. <laughs> it seems kind of reflective of Blue Lake. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're, that we're really focusing on is being this recreation destination for the region. And, you know, it seems like all the little cities and things kind of have their focus. And for Blue Lake to be that recreation hub um, for the county and the greater northern region, I think is something that we can do really well and something that we're already doing um, and doesn't require a lot of additional effort, you know, but as we're building more trails and our parks are, are doing well and the horse arena looks great and, you know, we're making these improvements, it's all recreation focused, which is great. So we've asked um, Noah to kind of focus on that a little bit as well. Um, so he's, he's asked us to start kind of creating these mood boards um, where we, he gives us these um, different websites to go in that designers use. Um, there's, um, there's sites for color palettes, there's typography um, sites, there's um, just like free picks type sites where people have already created logos and to start kind of going through and seeing kind of like what resonates or what has been something that maybe reflects some of our conversations. So we've been able to take the branding work that you guys all did um, and pull that together for him. So he has all that information and then also start kind of working towards um, coming up with some stuff for that will be presented and uh, work through. But I just wanted to let you guys know that that project is moving forward. And I think it's, we're, we're kind of at a fun point. And so we really, we're focusing on the gateway signage. Um, it won't be, you know, the big monument sign yet, but creating a nice sign where right now it just says Blue Lake downtown with an arrow, like that really needs to go. Um, he's going to be working on something there, um, and then we'll be working on signage throughout the community, and then we'll be looking <clears throat> at all of our online um, social media platforms as well. So he basically gets creates a logo for you and then he transitions that logo so that it can be used on letterhead it can be used on you know your instagram it can be you know tall round long you know stacked so it just it has all the pieces that can be applicable across different uh, media platforms um, so that will be something that we'll be able to bring back to you guys in the near future as he starts to develop that but i wanted to give you um, an update on that process, because like I said, that has, has been a long time coming, you know, to get to that point. Um, but I think we're, we're trending, you know, it, this is kind of a fun project. So, and Noah's really fun to work with. He's, he's got more energy than probably anyone I have ever seen. And he's very artistic. And um, like I said, he's just uh, pretty dynamic. And so I'm hoping that he'll be able to have some time too with EDC to kind of get your guys' feedback as well. So, um, so as that moves forward, we'll be able to bring you back some additional info, but I just want to let you know that that's kind of where this is moving forward. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of a hard process because you, you, it's not something that can really be done in a large group. Like we took the large group and we did the big ideas and then we synthesized it down more and more and more. And now you kind of need that you know, a couple people just to kind of focus that effort. And so Noah's kind of that guy now who's taking all of this and funneling it down into something that, um, you know, translates in, in a different format. So, um, yeah, so I don't know if you guys have any questions or That'll be comments. exciting for summer activities. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're looking at um, what we'll do with this imagery, too, is it'll translate over to merchandise. It'll translate over to marketing campaigns. And one of the things that we really want to focus on is kind of hitting all of these recreation sectors. And so they kind of have some coordinated branding. So whether it's steelhead season, um, whether it's, you know, riding horses at the arena or on the trails or mountain biking, you start to create, they kind of, they're called like badges. Um, but they're basically, you know, you have your icon logos, but they, they're, 
they're reflective of your Blue Lake brand, but they highlight different aspects of your recreation programming. So, so um, it's like a personal life right there. Yeah, yeah. And then you start putting it on a hat and a sweatshirt and, and a you know, sticker for your water bottle. Exactly. So it just really starts getting us out there. So people start going, oh, yeah, Blue Lake's that place where you can go steelhead fishing, kayaking. You know, I can ride my horse out there. You know, there's the trail, mountain biking. You know, there's all these things taking place, roller skating, baseball, softball you know, um, tennis. I mean, we've, we've got so much really going on. So, um, figuring out a way to kind of brand that and merchandise it and, you know, use it for marketing is what he'll be really focusing on. Will there be like some spot? I know you had showed us some pictures a while back. Mm -hmm. Will there be some spots on the monument kind of for event signage or so that there doesn't have to be, um, just funky general signs for, you know, farmer's market or something mm -hmm. um, that either businesses can pay to have the, the poster that fits um, future right. revenue for Noah and his company. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yep, this is, you put this on here and you, there's a schedule of who gets the space or maybe there's a few spaces right? so that that event can be publicized, the Grange breakfast mm -hmm. or something like that. So it doesn't make it look kind of just cheesy. I don't know what else don't to like call it. Boards. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, it just seems like if we're going to go to all this effort yeah. to put this really nice gateway sign to the community, then mm -hmm. how do we incorporate all those events and all those little pieces right. to advertise? Part of our problem right now is we're a little bit limited. The, the property where the main signage is is owned by the school. And that comes with some limitations because of being, you know, a public asset and, you know, looking at advertising for profit type activities. So the school has been great about allowing us to put signage up that are more community focused events. So the Grange breakfast, the, um, the horse story tour, the farmer's markets and things. Um, when you start getting into more advertising for specific businesses, uh, that's yeah. where they start to have some problems. And so there's been times where we've had, you know, people's signs have disappeared and I have to go to the school and be like, hey, I'm sorry, they didn't know. Can I like take their sign back for them and let me go return it? We had a little bit of a sign war situation going on for a while. Um, and at one point, I think the, um, the school had collected quite a few signs. Like by the time I was able to figure out where they all went, I was like, oh my gosh, you've got Cali sign, you've got the distillery sign, you got some of those signs. So we had... Um, so we had to kind of come up with a process and they had to come up with a policy. It seems to be, um, we kind of know the parameters now we're working within. And so we've, like I said, we've kept it very like community focused um, type of info. Um, the other situation is the really large sign. That's the sign that's maintained by the Chamber of Commerce. And so we've been talking with the Chamber about, you know, ways to update that sign. Um, there's some... Some of the plaques aren't representative necessarily anymore of, it, of you know, entities or organizations that are still out here. So what are some ways that maybe that could be updated? Um, and could that be a place for businesses to advertise as well? Oh, so that's not coming of... down? No. Oh, not see, I, right now. For some reason, I thought that was coming down. So okay. we've been kind of looking at keeping that sign because that's the chamber sign, so we don't really have control over that, but working with the chamber to give it a little bit of a facelift. I, I think Emily's going to go power wash it and then And that's also it. on the school property? It's all on the school property, yeah. And so we are looking at a monument sign kind of coming down off of that that would be like a lower sign that's, you know, like City of Blue Lake, you know, welcome to whatever, okay. you know, choose your adventure in Blue Lake type right. thing. Keep going to the downtown. Um, so we're kind of, we're, okay. we have some constraints that we're working within. Um, the biggest thing about that location is that we need people to know that the city of Blue Lake is the next exit. Mm -hmm. um, because what we were having in the past is people were taking the roundabout and then turning and going into the casino. And then there was confusion where people were like, well, how do I get to the river or how, you know, and getting kind of turned around. So we wanted people to know that the city of Blue Lake, to get into the city, you got to go down to the next exit, and that's your access to the river and the brewery and different things. So um, that had originally started out as our focus, and so we had that basic simple sign, 
that was only supposed to last for like once we get that signage then the businesses that are down there can put billboards exactly so then we can direct them once we get them down there exactly you start having and that's why we have like the little black and white signs that you know say like hey this way they're so nice (laughs) yeah and we have to be a little bit careful too as a city that you know we're not um you know using public assets for private um gain you know but we also recognize as a small community we all need to work together to you know advertise and you know they're there are partners they generate sales tax and that comes back to the city so when you kind of look at you know cross marketing and, and partnering we have a little bit of leverage but we have to you know also be cognizant of that so mm-hmm. um, i think a lot of what noah is going to help us do is you know focus that that entry and then really look at you know the kind of the marketing tools that we'll have because we're you know we're reaching a fairly large audience now um so we want to st- have a real co- start having a real coordinated brand. Um, I think we're at that level now. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any public input at this time, Ken? I always liked the mural down on the the uh, Lindspan store down there. I thought that was a heck of an asset. Um, some years ago, I approached your staff, mentioning the possibility of using uh, one or more sides of the Emporium building uh, for art and things of that nature. Uh, Tom Matson, director of public works with Humboldt County, in his wisdom, knew they had to paint the uh, the courthouse building down there. So he went ahead and somebody, of course, had to do the correct rep and everything and paint it and put that thing they have on the end of that. So for a property owner such as myself, there are definite benefits to working on those kind of projects. So uh, that's still an open thing. I'd much rather have that than what's currently underneath the building, which is the graffiti people are back to working down there. Of course, they don't get anybody seeing on that. Uh, and uh, so I, I think there's a, there may be other business owners also, or property owners who'd be willing to participate in that uh, long-term plan. Uh, as far as content goes, we would have, a, we, would, we would not be too constrictive. There may be a few things we don't wanna have on the building for whatever reasons there are. Um, I guess I could paint a great big uh, I vote no on Danco sign on the whole side there, but I don't think that would be appropriate. So in, in lieu of that, maybe we can find some people who are interested in that, and I, I'm happy to work. My family's happy to work with the city on that kind of project. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Kent. Um, that might be something for the Arts and Heritage Commission. Yeah, and they actually have a mural kind of ad hoc um, group that has been working on identifying locations and looking for funding and resources. So um, once we, we've we been having trouble getting a quorum and getting them to meet, um, they meet on Wednesday nights and uh, unfortunately a couple of them work on Wednesday nights. So we're trying to get a special meeting so they can take some action to come up with a different meeting date <laughs> where they can all coordinate, but it's been um, it's been difficult, so we're hoping that we can get them together in February so that we can get them back on track. But um, yeah, and as part of their mural group, actually Frank Onstein had commissioned a mural um, at Powers Creek just by his house. There's He had done some vegetation removal and found this part of the cement wall that's a retaining wall and was like, hey, this would be a great place for a mural. So he worked with the mural group and they found an artist and he paid that artist to be able to um, put that little mural so it's really cute um, but they they are actively um, uh, interested in in making that happen so um, moving on to item six spring event planning yeah so I just wanted to kind of give um, an update on kind of where we're going uh, going into spring um, thinking about what our event programming starts to look like Um, One of the new projects that we're working on is um, kind of branding and introducing the public to Prash Hall um, as a music venue. Um, We've done a lot of work in Prash to to get it ready to be used um, for a multitude of um, programming, and one of those is a music venue. So um, it has new sound um, baffling that's been installed, which has been amazing. So the sound no longer carries up and kind of echoes up at the top of the building. It's all kind of controlled and the sound is real is actually really, really 
has changed in an amazing way. <laughs> um, and so that's exciting. We have new lights that have been installed. We fixed up the stage. Uh, we have capacity now um, to work with sound engineers and things to be able to do um, larger music events. And so thinking about Prash Hall, you know, there's, there's very limited music venues in Humboldt County now. And Prash Hall is one that, you know, I think as we start to get more interest and we start to show its capacity, I think we'll really pick up a lot of traction. There's it's also parties and it's been busy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also an opportunity to look at using it um, to provide space. One of the things Emily and I have been talking about is like there's this gap for like the 15 to 18 year old high school students. Like there's nowhere to go anymore, you know? I mean, and one of, I was uh, buying some yarn and one of the ladies who uh, works at the yarn store was telling me, you know, she's got a high school kid. She's like, these kids have nowhere to go. Like they go to Tony's and have a milkshake and a burger and hang out. But, you know, you used to be able to go to like different like uh, dance clubs and things. They would have, you know, like 18 and under nights and things. And there's just really not any of that happening anymore. And so Emily and I were talking, I'm like, you know, what about using um, Prash Hall and maybe coming up with some programming to see if we can become, you know, at least once a month have maybe it's like, you know, you have a DJ, you have food, you have the arcade games, you know, we could throw out, you know, cornhole stuff or whatever, but have it more as a place where kind of that age demographic could come and hang out and listen to music and, and whatever. Um, and maybe we become the venue on the North coast for, for that demographic group, because I don't think Those there's dance and middle school dances oh, are really popular. Super popular. And the older kids would. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and that's kind of more in the venue of Prash Hall is, you know, it, more of a family friendly type. So, you know, no drinking and stuff, but still being able to, you know, have a place for kids to hang out. And like I said, the sound system sounds great now. Um, so it could be really fun. So we're looking at some of that programming. Um, one of the things that we're doing next Thursday, if anyone's interested, we're launching our first, um, we're calling it our one night stand karaoke night. Um, and so we're going to be doing a karaoke contest and a 10 year old would be interested. Potentially. Well, we're talking of, so this one's a 21 and over event yeah, because I saw that, yeah. but I was like, but we have talked about like, oh, maybe, I don't know if young kids would want to do it though. Like, do they get embarrassed or, you know, so, or to get I bullied? Mean, like, so. Maybe. Yeah. So um, the, what we're looking at doing is kind of a series of karaoke contests leading up to a summer um, like grand finale. Like, um, so the first, the first one will be Thursday night and it will be from, I think it's seven to 10. It's 21 and over. Um, hey Wands will be serving food, so they'll be doing um, tacos and a nacho bar. We'll have um, beer by uh, Mad River Brewery and then a little bit like a mocktail bar and maybe like a specialty drink. Um, we'll have some appetizers and things. Um, the video games and everything will be open. We're going to put out some round tables so that people can sit. Um, and then we'll also have a dance floor set up and then people will be able to sing on stage. Um, so it's an opportunity. So we're going to have amateur hour from, I think it's seven to eight 30 will be amateur hour. So people can just go up and do their thing. Um, and then the contest will start at eight 30 for, uh, there'll be a hundred dollar cash prize. Um, so the idea is that to qualify for the grand finale in the summer, you need to participate in at least two of our karaoke series. And we're hoping to have four, um, or pay a higher dollar entry fee um, but the cash prize will be more substantial and you'll be crowned you know the one night stand karaoke king or queen or however we do that so um i think it's going to be really fun it's it's reaching a different market than we've reached and so that's kind of one of our our focal points too is like how do we you know how do we get outside like our middle school group and start reaching you know people in other areas that maybe don't know as much about prash because that also trickles down so as people are coming out here for karaoke they're going like oh did you know they have skate night like we could bring the kids or well, look at their park you know so it starts to get us a little bit more exposure on different levels so Excellent. yeah so i think it's going to be really fun um we'll see karaoke has been really popular they do it wednesday nights at the logger and it is hilarious but it's also amazing you get you know you have your locals and they just have a lot of fun but then you get these 
the ringers that come in and they actually have like some of them come in and do like a whole performance like they're in bands and things so they use these as like I don't know if it's just for practice or they're trying to get their name out there but you don't know what you're going to get and it's pretty exciting so we did that uh that contest at the casino a number of years oh, ago uh-huh. in Trinidad and yeah, it was super successful. Yeah. And people loved the ramping up to a like a championship. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we want to build that competitiveness. Yeah. And you got to have your judges. Mm-hmm. And... Oh, judges. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do for these is we're going to, everyone's going to, with your entry, you're going to get one free drink um, and a voting card. And so um, for the the contest, you'll have a vote card. But if you want to purchase more votes you can purchase more vote cards so if you got your friends coming and you're like hey like you know i want to win this you know buy some more votes and you know create more of a competition so um Mm. so it's just a way to anti-democratic i know but it's a way to make money (laughs) exactly (laughs) bring your friends (laughs) so yeah so we're gonna try it out i'm sure there'll be some some bumps in the road the first one um but i think for the most part people know it's for fun um it's a ten dollar entry um like i said you get your first uh drink for free whether that's a you know a beer or wine or a mocktail or a soda um we'll have some appetizers out we'll probably just do like big things of popcorn on the tables or something and um morgan but it, pro- oh no it's a thursday so morgan won't be out there it's a thursday yeah yeah so it's been great because we've been working with haywans and um yeah. Those guys have been great and they live here in Blue Lake and they're super stoked on everything the city is doing and they love the kitchen. And so it's nice for us because we don't have to worry about the food and we don't have to worry about taking a loss on the food. <laughs> it's like, okay, we're, we're getting money at the door. We're going to get money off the drinks. And then we don't, someone else needs to worry about marketing their food and serving and all of that. So it's a low entry point for us to have this event. So even if we just break even, we're fine. Um, it's a pretty low staffing level type event. Um, Your risk is minimal. It's very minimal and it gives us a lot of exposure. So so it works good. And then Justin has been amazing. He's going to do the sound. Um, so Maybe get it plugged on the radio if you get yeah. ticket giveaways. Yeah, so I believe Colin, um, I think this is part of our Blue Lake um, – advertising that's going on yeah 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 so we have that and then we have um we're going to be starting to do more fundraising for the bike park um the bike park is really coming together and it's going to be amazing Um, but we do need to start raising more funds for that so we'll be um looking at kind of kicking that off and we'll be working a lot with redwood coast mountain biking association as well um they've been a great partner and they have a huge reach and um they're huge supporters in fact it was the bike park was kind of their brainchild so um so it's great to be able to have them as um as partners on that and then we'll be having i believe we have a barn dance also that will be coming up and i think we're going to kind of use the barn dance as kind of like a grand opening a grand reopening of crash hall we kind of have a lot of the bugs worked out um there's still some stuff taking place. We're, you know, still getting things moved around and moved in. But by that time, we should be pretty well ready to kind of launch it as like the crash reopening. Um, so that'll be exciting. What about what's happening like down in the downtown area? Um, my tenants are curious of mm-hmm. what, you know. Yeah. So that. Um, what will bring the public. Yeah, absolutely. So if. If you guys want, if you have any other questions, I'll, I can pick that up kind of. Is that um, somewhere else down there? It's the next day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I can kind of tie it. But it's, okay. You're right Perfect. there. So sorry. Yeah. You're right yeah, there. No, I didn't good. catch that part. Okay. I just thought springtime farmer's yeah. markets. Yeah. It's all. Okay. I know. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing for us right now is, um, you know, spring's a little difficult because we don't know the weather. It's hard to plan anything outdoors yet. So, you know, a lot of our stuff still in the spring. I see a shadow. Is, I'm riding with that for I, a while. It's supposed to be in early spring. That's where we're keeping our fingers crossed. But I think but... it's really great that Crash Hall, I hear nothing but great things. Yeah. You know, people are like, you need to go skating. And... Our skate program has been off the chart. Yeah. I mean, we've been getting over, I think, Saturday. Friday, we had like 160 skaters or something. I mean, that's well, luckily, they're not all on the floor at the same time. And so we kind of have to monitor that because we are getting to a point where it's like, you know, the the capacity is huge in that building. But 
when you're skating, you kind of got to narrow that down. You know, you don't want people right on top of each other. So, um, yeah, so that's one of the things that staff is really monitoring is like how many people are on the floor. But the nice thing about the space is that a lot of the kids are in on the arcade games and, you know, parents are there, but they're like sitting over on the side or there's a birthday party going on. So not, there's just a lot of capacity Mm -hmm. to, to, you know, handle bodies. I wonder Um, if it'll flow outside as the summer gets ramped up. So we definitely start to drop off in the summer and that's why we really have to maximize like our cold weather, rainy um, season. That's where we make the most revenue, but we're starting to see, you know, that, um, the, the use is starting to kind of balance out a little bit. And I think people, you know, as we do, we've been putting a lot of effort into, um, you know, just our outreach and our, our kind of our gimmicks, you know, it's the, like, you know, it's neon night, you know, and we put out like a big thing on social media, like where you're neon and come in $5, you know, like we're giving them like a $2 break on their entry and we get like 80 more people coming, you know? And so just little things, um, because those little things just give you an extra way to like send out another flyer or another post, you know? And so it's not even so much about like, the fun of the event is just that extra way to, you know, keep your name out there. Um, so that's been really successful. We're seeing our marketing reach has like grown exponentially. So when we look, we post like on the blue, like happenings page, and then we'll send that same post out to all the events and Humboldt moms. And because we're really, you know, we're kind of in that middle school kind of demographic. And those are the ones we really want because those kids buy a lot of concessions as well oh yes they do their parents send them and they're like i got 10 bucks i don't even want all candy or what you know it's it's, yeah pineapple soda that somebody showed up with recently i didn't know they didn't know i don't know they go through like candy and chips and things and i'm like you know what i'm sorry i'm not your parent (laughs) so (laughs) what would you like (laughs) you're skating you're exercising i'm always like don't forget to brush your teeth tonight you know so is there like um hockey team or anything like that i mean i know they used to do that yeah the roller derby used to um we sometimes work with roller derby, um, but it's, I don't know, it's, I think because we're a little bit out of the way, they mm. try and have most of their practices like around they the Eureka area. They do a training clinic out They did, and they used to do like the, was it the Redwood Saplings, I think was their kid roller derby that had, um, they would come out and rent the space and stuff, so. I was thinking hockey, like the, yeah, I don't they did know. that at the McKinleyville Youth, or the uh-huh. activities there. Yeah. Um, we do hockey during summer camp. And it was adults and, kids like and kids, they had, oh, yeah. they had two leagues. It yeah, was, okay. we haven't we haven't really had the hockey side of things. We've been talking about other programs though, like futsal and um, you know basketball drop in. Right now, we're renting out Prash for um, a couple of the um, charter schools who don't have gyms, so they use Prash for all their basketball games and stuff. So that's been that's been really good for us as well. Um, but you know, during the week, we're we're also trying to look at more programming and whether that's a class, it could be cooking, it could be jewelry making, it could be you know a book club, whatever, just, you know, being, having people rotate through the space. Um, we get a lot of pickleballers. Um, they use space a lot. Um, but as the weather gets better, they really like to be outside. So, um, you know, just trying to multitask the space. Um, the kitchen is a big part of that. So we're working on getting that all permitted now. Um, so yeah, just, it's just a great space. There's so many options and opportunities. We do a ton of birthday parties, um, awesome. which that's been a great revenue source for us too. So, and at this point, it's kind of paying for itself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our revenue projections are. Um, we started out a little bit low because we had so many days that we were down with you know repairs and upgrades and things. So, um, but we're consistently you know just catching up um, to what our revenue. And we had projected a pretty high um budget for our revenue this year because we really wanted you know to really focus our efforts on really driving revenue so um i think we're gonna get there we're gonna be pretty darn close um yeah i mean our skate nights you know when you're pulling in twelve thirteen hundred dollars a night just off you know five dollar entries and kids buying snacks you know it's you're doing pretty well for a little you know a little rural skating rink so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's it's really fun and it's just nice to see so many people enjoying the space too yeah 
We have a lot of kids running around in the park at night. You know, I was like, well, I used to ditch skating too when I got to be a certain age. You said you went skating, but you really just ran around town. So I'm, I'm like, it's a little bit of karma coming back on me now. I'm always out oh, there like, there now. what are you guys doing? You're in my lane. <laughs> yeah, now you're supposed to worry about them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I have for kind of our spring programming. Yes, really great awesome. questions. So moving on to item seven for the various updates A through E. Yeah. So um so Kelly was asking about the downtown programming. Um and that's definitely something that um is on our minds and thinking about farmers markets and um a big part of that is going to be the uh, construction project around the town square. So we have a contractor um and we're working that with them right now on their submittals. So they'll be starting construction in the spring. Um, to, there's a lot of concrete work associated with the reconstruction of the town square. So um, they really want to make sure they have, you know, some good weather windows so we don't really mess that up. So, um, but that's all moving forward. And I think that'll be a pretty quick turnaround. It's not... It's not a huge project. Um, one of the things that we are wrestling with right now is, you know, the bid for the bathroom came in just extremely high. Um, and so we talked with our funding source about, you know, what were some of the ways that we could modify the project to meet the intent of having the bathroom, but not have the hundred thousand dollar bathroom. Um, and so one of the things that we talked about was using our funding to get all of the infrastructure in the ground, get all the plumbing there and get it, you know, stubbed up. Um, and then we've been looking at some options that other communities are using. And I think it's kind of clever. Um, what they're doing is they're building really cute, like, um, like almost a little, almost like a bus shelter. And then they're using the porta potties, um, and inserting them in the shelter. So it kind of starts to look like it's, you know, it's all kind of part of a, a designed um, project. And then using the vinyl wraps to wrap the bathroom so that it doesn't look like your traditional porta potty, but it can be, you know, wrapped so it's all flowers or bright or, you know, so what's nice about it is then you just have a maintenance contract with, you know, like B and B. And they come and clean it, and they manage it, and you get your ADA accessible bathroom. So this would not be plumbed, but they would be ADA accessible. Right. So it would what it would do is it would allow us to have a bathroom, which we have to have a bathroom to build your farmers markets and things. So the right. bathrooms so we important. need we need it. So it's kind of a temporary. Um, and someday, if a hundred thousand dollars we'll falls out of the sky, we'll keep working towards having a new bathroom. Yeah. And the um, funding agency was like cool like if you have a bathroom that's great you know and you know they said everyone's coming back because everyone's bids came in like extremely high because we all got funded like two years ago yeah and right. now the bids are coming in and like costs have just skyrocketed so um so they were really they really liked the concept and i think we could do something that looks really nice and blends in nicely and take some of the um it relieves the city a little bit too of responsibility. So if we just have, cause we have B and B's, you know, we have one out in the horse arena and we rent them um, for a wastewater treatment plant and stuff. And it's great. They clean them all. They maintain them. B and B's right here. Um, they you know, do a good we, job. yeah. And then you would have an ADA accessible one and we meet all the intents. And if we can do like Noah from visual concepts, that's one of his big focus points of his business Those are wraps vehicle can wraps. Be expensive though. They can be, but I think for something like that, it's going to be really affordable. They're pretty small. So he was kind of giving me some price points and I was like, oh, that's, you know, okay, I mean, a vehicle than, might be like, like a big food truck would be, oh like yeah, four or $5,000 more, but yeah, seven, nine. Yeah. So these would be much, much less than that. Yes. And more. it would be well within our budget. Depending so. on what they're sitting in, you may not have to wrap the whole thing. Exactly. Top yeah. Bottom. Yeah. You know, they yeah. just, they insert. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah. And like I said, you can do a really nice, um, you know, little shelter. So it looks nice and kind of fits in and, you know, you'll have the bus stop, the bathroom, the um, water fountain. It's all kind of utilitarian there Keeps anyways. the wind from knocking them over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People driving off with them. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what we're thinking about right now to be able to meet the intent of all 
the grant objectives and then stay within our budget as well. So and get that infrastructure infrastructure in infrastructure. Yeah, we'll get all of it plumbed. So yeah. 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 Um so yeah, so the town square is a big part of, you know, the downtown programming. Um it's gonna be a real central location for events and um, that'll be something that we work with the chamber and we work with, you know, the downtown uh, businesses and the city to really drive interest to that area, um, bring events to that area. Um, so, you know, right now, right now, the town square looks really pretty. <laughs> it's, all green, it's all green, but it won't last long. So we really do need to, you know, kind of elevate it. And it will also have the splash um, pad for the kids. So it'll really become a place where people want to congregate, which will be nice. Especially when the weather gets good. Yes. Yeah, because it does get, it has been getting hot here every year. I think it gets hotter. Um, so yeah, and you know, we've done some outreach. Um, I believe uh, Theora is on the Chamber of Commerce now as oh, well. Okay, good. I'm glad. Um, yeah, and you know, we try and, um, you know, work with Keiko as well. You know, she's she's limited on her hours. Yeah. And so sometimes that can be difficult where we have something in the later afternoon or in the mm -hmm. evening and her hours are limited. So that's um, somewhat difficult, but we do try and, you know, whatever we're doing, like plug her business as well. And, um, but Theora has been, you know, really interested in doing little secondary markets or just having more stuff out on the sidewalk. An and ice cream cart could be a yeah. good business. Around yeah. I've been trying to, so my nephew and his friends bought a cotton candy machine <gasps> this year. Those could make huge they money at fundraising. So much money. Yes. And I'm like, invest in an ice cream cart next. So they're yeah. actually thinking about it and they're all blue light kids and oh my gosh. they are working the cotton candy machines like you wouldn't believe so yeah make it yeah. do novelty ice cream they don't have to scoop it no you yeah know? i'm People like and you could go down the river stuff. bar mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's one of the things that the kids are looking at which i think is really cool you know they're like 15 years they're old little, and little entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. Oh, reinvesting well, yeah, their money you into can make it's better than pushing lawnmowers yeah but we still need that i know it's right like, yeah yeah no the, so that's a great opportunity with the downtown um talking um I, because I wasn't here at the last meeting, mm -hmm. is there, I don't know what the status is of Del Arte and what they will contribute to the downtown. Are they right. pretty much done or what's happening I with that? I think they've done really well in their fundraising. Good. I think okay. they've met, I think they've actually exceeded their, um, their funding goals. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so it's my understanding that they're kind of, their focus right now is doing kind of the community programming. So more of the workshops and classes um, which is, you and know, the music venue development. Yeah. And I have seen that they've put out now, like, Hey, if you want to rent the theater for an event, you know, so, okay. cause that was something that we have been talking about for a long time is just Del Arte has some really fabulous, um, features and amenities outside of, you know, Del Arte use. And if you'd be interested in like leasing those out or renting them, you know, for movie nights or outdoor concerts or, you know, whatever, um, there would be people interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. So I did see now that they are focusing a bit on that, um, which is great because I mean, even having, you know, using the Carlo for a movie, you know, you could do dinner, drinks, a movie, you know, it yeah. could be really cool. So um, so there's a little bit more, um, thought being put into that is just a revenue stream too. Um, so we haven't, I believe they're actually having a meeting tonight. Oh the yeah. Locker? The tap room. Yeah. Or is it the brewery? I thought it was at the locker. Oh, maybe so. I, yeah, I, there was a flyer. I, but I do think it is tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Locker. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not really sure. Um, well, that's good. There's still, I like I said, I had not had an opportunity to check. That yeah, in, so. yeah. So I think they're um, revenue stable uh, for a period of time. Yeah. At some point, it might be appropriate to have somebody come in and talk to the Absolutely. council here yeah. or the commission. Yeah, yeah. I think that in would a be. Couple months. Yeah. Um, it seems like, you know, they kind of have their core staff now and, and they've got new board members mm -hmm. and they're still mm -hmm. finding their way forward, but they seem to have momentum and yeah. there's things, a lot of things are percolating. Yeah. They aren't like yeah. foreclosed on like no. frantically. Okay, no. Thanks. And you know, if they can sell their property, you know, down in the district, you know, that's, that would be a real boost right. too. So, and I know there's a lot of interest in that property. It's just, you know, commercial financing is, you know, Terrible. pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, up. yeah um yeah so that will be happening this year so that'll be nice to have that cleaned up um the bike park i talked a little bit about that um it's just coming along you know the bike park is 
it started out as just kind of this idea of like, you know, a grassroots effort. Let's, you know, we'll find some dirt, we'll build some jumps and, you know, start the thing and, you know, work towards it. And it quickly, people started to see a much larger vision of the bike park as not just, you know, something for the local, but more of an attraction and destination feature. Um, and so we've been really lucky. Tavis Kane, who owns, um, he and his family own the B&B Portable Toilets and Six Rivers, the fencing company. Tavis is a, um, a retired professional motocross rider and they build these tracks. Like this is what he and his buddies do. And so his really good friend, Dana, is a track builder and he got into building bike um, parks. And so when Tavis started hearing about this, he was like, no, this this needs to be like a destination feature. Because Tavis also owns a really good property in the district. And he's like, it won't be toilets forever, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I reckon I, and he loves the idea of the RV park. So he has made a huge investment into the bike park, a huge investment of um, cash resources and time and equipment. Um, and really is taking it to a level we wouldn't be at at this point without, you know, without that, um, that commitment. So, I mean, hats off to, to Tavis and Dana and then um, Pepe, um, Gary Johnson has also donated a tremendous amount of resources, um, his equipment. Uh, so it's just been really cool to see, you know, people really seeing the future of that park as something more for Blue Lake. Um, and it really will set us apart. It really will be something that people travel to Blue Lake just to go to that bike yeah, park. Parking could be an, an issue down there at some point. Yeah, yeah. And if we get to that point where we're having we'll that issue, it'll be great. Here park there, there, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so that is all just moving forward. And it'll be a phase development. Um, our goal right now is to get the dirt track in get that all stabilized, hopefully be able to either cap that with asphalt or some type of um, material to make sure that it doesn't break down. And then the second phase will be um, the pump track and, you know, integrating that into the trail features and things. So um, lots of good stuff. Uh, the Bottawak Community Project is moving through the um, design, engineering, and permitting process. And um we anticipate having something ready, I think, possibly to go to the planning commission, like maybe in April is, I think, what they're shooting for. So um, simultaneously, we're um, getting our housing element approved. And so we just had the final draft has been approved by HCD. So Gary's working on the final CEQA um, for that document. And then that will be presented um, to, I believe it gets presented to the planning commission and the council. Um, and then it goes through a process of review for CEQA and posting and things. But once it's through that process, it'll be adopted by council and we'll have a compliant housing element, um, which sets us up in you know, a really good position for funding and other opportunities and takes us off the naughty list, um, which will be great. That's been a really long um, long project, but lots of really good things you know, have come about uh, because of that process. So I'm really super excited. Gary's done a tremendous amount of work. Um, and right now HCD is really happy with Blue Lake and, you know, recognize it as a small that jurisdiction. We took on a lot. Difference. Oh yeah. 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 You don't want to get on the bad side of HCD. <laughs> um, the master plan and parcel subdivision, uh, Storyland Studios will be starting that work this month. Um, we were able to use some additional funding from that EDA grant. Um, so basically what they're going to do is they're going to take all the work that we've been doing, look at the projects, come up with a parcel, a recommended parcel configuration based upon what they think some um, development um, opportunities look like and kind of what looks like the best option for the city as far as, um, you know, breaking, we have some, we have like three big parcels and we need to subdivide those down. And so do we subdivide them down into one acre parcels or half acre parcels or, you know, what does that look like? So they're going to be helping us through that process. And then, uh, then SHN will do the final, um, survey and recommended subdivision so that will get us to the point where these parcels are all separated um, and so that just puts us in a much better position for any future development and that's all being paid for out of the EDA grant so that's that's a that's a big one for the city because um, that's about about sixty thousand dollars that um, will be put towards that project so 
Um, Powers Creek Restoration, uh, we are just moving forward through the design, engineering, and permitting. Um, I was just at a meeting last week, and kind of our goal right now is to get the project designed, engineered, and permitted. And this first phase, we would look at vegetation removal um, because part of our problem right now is that um, there's there's kind of a limited number of restoration contractors out there, and they get swooped up really fast with all the river restoration projects taking place. And so if you don't have a project out by now, you're not going to get a contractor once, you know, we would be looking at bidding this in like April or May. So if possibly even a little bit later. So um, looking at what we could do within this construction window, the vegetation removal is a huge part of the project anyways. Um, and so we're looking at kind of phasing it. So we would do the vegetation removal work this year and then bid the rest of the project for construction the next construction schedule so there's grant funding for this yeah so we have so we're a co-applicant with the bottle watershed council and so mm -hmm. that project was funded i think, believe it's nine hundred and sixty three thousand. Mm -hmm. um so we're um we have been partnering for a few years on this project to get it to the point where it's ready for construction so. Yeah, it's going to be great, you know, that, and I think that one of the big components of that will be alleviating some of the flood potential, you know, there's a lot of sediment buildup in that creek and that lends itself to, you know, increasing, you know, the, um, the topography of that Absolutely. creek, you know, starts to really ramp up and the vegetation is just the blackberry. Oh, it's insane. Whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, we had to take a cat in to just get into a space where we could get into the creek to even just do some of the topo surveys we tried first we tried with hand crews and then they're like this isn't working go get the backhoe and we tried with the backhoe and they're like this is not working and so gary actually brought his cat down and he's like just get out of the way like you're never going to get through this stuff it was so incredibly thick so and that also helps you know that causes flooding you know the gets backed up debris gets in there it slows the water flow so um, there's going to be a lot of benefit to this project. So, so yeah, I'm so excited. that is coming along. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have any questions on any of those, but mm -hmm. things are just, well, I don't have any on those, but I was going to ask if there's any update on the, uh, the Lynn strand building. Oh yeah. So, um, the Lynn strand building is being rented to, I believe six, I've heard four and six, um, artists. Um, you know, we were really excited. Hannah was ready to go. She had her plan. She met with the owners and the, the price of the, um, rent went up substantially and just, I had heard that that was kind of, um, like a couple thousand more. Mm -hmm. No, no hundreds though. Oh. Um, you know, and when you're looking at a business, that's going to be marginal to start out with, you know that it just pushed it out, you know, and I was like, don't, don't get into it at that point too. You know, it's like, you're going to be, you're just setting yourself up for failure, you know? And so unfortunately she was just like, I can't, I can't do it at that price point. It's just beyond. Um, Plus there was so much work she was going to have to do inside. Yeah. 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 And there, you know, there was a lot of support. I think her business model was solid. Um, you know, she had some really good ideas and then the fact that she had a business that she could operate out of that. So she would have instant revenue coming in from that to kind of help pull this one along. Um, but you know, you can't, you, you've got to make the numbers work and the numbers just weren't going to work at that point. So you have, um, four or six artists? Yeah. So what they're looking at is, um, studio space for all of them. Okay. And then they are talking about also doing, um, maybe in the spring or a little bit later, starting to do maybe some community classes, um, some gallery space. Um, I talked with um, one of the the renters, um, God, it was just last night, seems like a long time ago, um, and, you know, said, hey, we have, you know, if you have gallery space, like we have a tremendous number of very accomplished artisans in our community. And one of the things that they always need is gallery space. They have no place to showcase their stuff or sell their stuff. 
Um, and there's a lot of them also that are looking for um, just creation space as well. And she was like, oh, that's amazing because that could be something that, you know, we really work towards as, you know, and which would then be a source of revenue for the city too with sales tax. So that would be good. Um, so, you know, I was like, come in, let's meet and talk. And, and Debbie Toasty from SBDC is working with them as well. And she's like, you know, I've been telling them you got to have a retail component, you know, the city really needs it. And, you know, so we've been talking about, you know, like an arts alive night and different things that we could do just to engage, um, making that kind of maybe a draw. And then you have, you know, maybe Del Arte is open, the loggers open, maybe Theora is open, maybe Keiko does it, you know, so everyone's starting to work together a little bit kind of in that downtown area. So, um, they were, they seem very, um, fun and, you know, artsy and so you know Are creative any people of them local I, you know i'm not really sure who who all is involved i know some of them have been del arte students um so they have that connection to blue lake um so they're they're slowly putting things out there's more stuff showing up in the windows and stuff and they're um, just kind of creating their space so um, i'm looking forward to working with them and you know and supporting them in any way that i can and Maybe you need some help. Open studios will be. <laughs> Can you text the page somebody for the place across the street? Oh, um, you could. Miss Darcy? Did you miss Darcy? Do you mean for the roller skating rink? Yeah. Okay. Just meet for the basketball game. Oh, if you want to go, Vicky, I believe, is still at the at City Hall. You could. That's probably where I keep going. Yeah, you could knock on the window. She probably would come out and help you. Maybe you don't want to turn away check in the water bill <laughs> slot. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I saw they they're gonna use up that whole space there. I was wondering if Hannah could I know do her and I think it's gonna kind of morph and you know, I mean I think for them, you know, when you're splitting that rent across that many people, it makes it, you know, easier to get into something like that versus, you know, a single proprietor, you know, having to capture that you know See, to me flowers and art go together absolutely not, yeah yeah she needs a lot of space yeah that's what she's hoping for i'm sure yeah and she really i mean she's still like you know she had this dream and i think it was really good and you know her she was spot on for most of it and was you know she's a businesswoman she gets it she understands you know overhead and um you know just where she needs to be and so I think there's definitely still a space for Hana, and as things continue to evolve in the Powers Creek District, you know, that's always at the forefront of our thought process is, you know, um, how can some of that space, you know, come together to support that type of development? Because we need a grocery in town. We need fresh food. Um, so. No, I was so excited over that. And I mean, I'm excited over the art aspect, mm -hmm. but we um, can't eat art. I know. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to be as supportive as we can, and, um, you know, we're excited, and it's nice to see some lights on, so um, we wish them all the success, and I hope that I can be like, hey, don't forget, like, sell some stuff, <laughs> you know, because we do have some amazing artists in well, town. Maybe they'll do North Coast Open Studios. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I was like, hey, Patricia Sennett is right across from you, like, she's amazing, and she, I think she needs a studio space too i'm like talk was, with her what space in arcade ever went dark? she did and i think um some of those spaces got like changed or there was a lot of those artists that were looking for a new space and you know just being like right next door to your house you know but, so well, one of the things that i always really um were the phantom art galleries oh yes and if you have a vacant building then you could have mm -hmm. that there and that could be a way for people to be able to see a building and go, oh, look, at that's a full building. Absolutely. And help get it rented. Mm -hmm. um, but also it's a way for artists to display. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've been um, looking at that as well. Even in City Hall, I was like, mm -hmm. maybe we could just do, you know. alternative galleries. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. I mean, they do it in banks. Why not do it in City Hall? It's true. <laughs> well, yeah, wherever the public is. Yeah. 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 So we're just so limited on buildings. You know, that's mm -hmm. just, we're just hamstrung by that. Does the, the Nav River, do they still have an alternative gallery there? Um, I don't know. I don't think they've done that for a while. Okay. I think they just have some of their own 
work on the walls now. But yeah, that was something for a while they were, um, when, yeah, that was an option. So. Okay, well, um, are we ready to move on to the Chamber of Commerce report, Justin? <laughs> All right. I never wanted to see Emily so bad in my life. I don't yeah. think. <laughs> um, okay. So we were talking about the Valentine's bingo. No, that's uh, the Saturday uh, starts at five 30. Um, we we're talking about buying some gift cards and um, instead of doing kegs of beer, doing cans, um, we're going to have um, possibly the museum do some treats. Uh, because the elementary school is out on break. Um, and then I'll be, I guess I'll be doing some music and some uh, sound system for the for the announcing. Um, we're talking about the um, business calendar. Um, Colin from uh, Eureka Radio, I believe it is. Um, talking about doing workshops for uh, local businesses and market marketing. Um, and then reaching out to Noah for branding. Um, we're going to be doing some workshops with them as well. Um, so you, we were talking about, <laughs> you guys were talking about the roundabout sign. Uh, roundabout sign did come up. And um, we were talking about possibly adding a um, list of um, businesses here in town. Um, one of the concerns raised was that some of our businesses are alcohol related. And the sign is actually on school property. So the ability to be able to list an alcohol business on school property, we're going to ask. Um, but as you guys were talking, I actually just thought of something that instead of doing individual business names, have one line of, um, say, something like food, drink, recreation, next right, mm -hmm. um, something like that. That just entered my brain. I'll talk to Emily about that. Um, then we had a presentation from uh, Eureka Radio. Um, and then um, they presented some numbers for us to to partner with the city for uh, for some uh, advertisements. Um, we decided we were going to wait until uh, how this bingo goes to see if we can afford it. Um, and then the uh, chamber maybe uh, in the future working towards doing a Grange breakfast, taking over, you know, one one Grange breakfast to, to give uh, them a little bit of a break. Um, they approved me using audio equipment to capture the meeting so that I no longer have to sit there and type and talk at the same time. Uh, very thankful for that. Um, we had the Little League asked to um, be sponsored. Um, we are going to be returning as a, a sponsor, and we get a discount for returning as a sponsor, and it's a $300 um, uh, to, or whatever. <laughs> We're paying 300 bucks to return as a returning sponsor. Um, and the last thing was um, possible reaching out to RCMBA. Uh, for possible support for any Mary Day uh, for the liquor. Um, and that was it for the chamber. Companion Mary Day is July 14th, Sunday, 6th Sunday. What is that afternoon? Where is it? Redwood Coast Mountain Biking Association. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Friends of the Annie and Mary Trail didn't want to do the beer booth this year, so we were thinking maybe RCMDA. We were going to see if they might be interested and use it as a fundraiser for the bike park. Oh. Yeah, we thought it would be a good one. Right. One door closes and, and another opens. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Um, Mandy, back to you. For yeah, I think that kind of caught you yeah. up on everything that's going on yeah, so far that we know of. So, so are there any announcements? Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. It starts at 5.30. Did I get yeah. time? Pizza. Yeah, I think we'll get pizza. 
excellent pizza. Yeah. Oh, yes. So good. And they have 13-inch pizzas now. I'm so excited. Valentine's <laughs> Bingo, Saturday at 5. Okay, so got that. Uh, they're great to work with, too. Mm -hmm. We did that with the Barnica and the museum, and they were great. They do they a good job. Yeah. And I could call them up and go, you're running low on, you know, Hawaiian pizza. I can go be back to work. They've done a great job. Yeah, I'm glad they're there. Um, so future agenda items. We discussed maybe Del Arte at some point in a couple months. Um, any other future agenda items? Did did I my application get put on the board meeting? Uh, yeah, so that will be on the twenty seventh, I think, is a meeting. Okay. So yeah. So I we never have heard back from the person that emailed, so I wasn't yeah. sure. Okay. Oh uh, right about that. Which what application? I uh, want my term ends. Oh, yeah. I've got to do mine. Yes, you need yours as well. Yeah. Good. That's good to hear. You haven't been here before. I was just filling in for somebody that left early or something. Yeah. Yeah, so it's time to do it. Yeah. I think you're the only two that are up, or Jake and Darcy are the next cycle. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm almost done with it. It's just putting my application in. Yeah. Because you turn over the same one, too. And council knows who you are. Yes, letter, I did. You know, yeah, now it gets out of date. You answer those questions you can't. Okay, well, at this time, I think we are probably ready to adjourn. Mm -hmm. um, so, what, what chair will entertain a motion to adjourn? I motion that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned. Okay. Okay.